You may hear him in a Boston blues saloon playing a sax with his band. You may read his poems in a number of books and journals out there, including one that he co-edits called Hang Loose Press. Or perhaps you have witnessed the visceral emotion of sadness, recognition, and moving on as a Native American son tosses his estranged father's ashes into the river water while Dick's poem is being read on the award-winning film Smoke Signals. And now, very much look forward to hearing Dick share a little blues, a little poetry, and whatever else may come. Please give a warm morning welcome to Dick Clory. Um, so as Cheryl was saying, it, it was about 15 years ago, for me, I, I began to find a, a way that to, would bring together my, my two passions of poetry and the blues. I started working with blues musicians to create pieces that would let me uh, be a musician and a poet at the same time. Uh, we performed, we made a CD together. When I can't have uh, the musicians for a performance like today, I, I'm using what you might call the karaoke version of what we recorded. So. You'll hear the band on, on the CD, and you'll hear me live, or as live as I get, anyway. Um, uh, and in, in these pieces, you'll hear I'm using the, the most familiar and traditional form of the blues, the 12 bars. 12 bar blues, that is to say, a piece of music that has same, some number of choruses, each 12 bars long, 12 musical measures. Um, the, actually, the, this, the, the, uh, the, uh, the CD that uh, we recorded, I, to start it off, I wrote a piece called 12 Bar Blues. And then I thought, well, to close out the CD, I, I better write a poem called 12 Blues Bars. So I did that also. Um, and um, the, as Cheryl mentioned, uh, Forgiving Our Fathers uh, was adapted for the final scene of this movie, Smoke Signals. And that was one of the first poems that I, that I made into a, a blues piece. Uh, and it's on uh, the CD, which is back there, Ghost Radio Blues. Um, so, uh, and I think, uh, just a second here. Uh, before I do any of these, um, I think I want to do one, one poem without music. And that is um, one of my inspirations in the blues world. The guy who first invited me to come and play the sax with his band in the Mississippi Delta in 1997 was a guy named Big Neck Jack Johnson, who was an international blues legend who lived in Clarksdale, Mississippi. I've been going back to Clarksdale every year since then. Uh, Jack and I were good friends. I wrote this poem for him a while ago, and he died uh, in March this year. So I'm just open with that. And the poem dedicated to Big Jack is called Authentic. On stage with Big Jack, Bob, the bass player, and I exchange glances, the eyes laughing at insider jokes told by the music. Like when Jack pounds a 12-bar blues into 13 or 14 or 10. Later, I realize I'm laughing at myself, New Jersey's answer to the Delta blues. For my first reaction, I'm laughing at myself. Big Jack played it wrong. I imagine saying, Jack. I know how important this music is to you and all that, growing up as you did playing the blues, but I have to tell you, you got it wrong. And so, what makes it different when Jack and I discuss history? I have read books about civil rights struggles and I've been to demonstrations, but Jack admonishes, now don't listen when someone tells you things were bad. And he goes on to describe a kind of golden age where they had pigs, chickens, grew enough food for themselves and minded their own business. You were sick, they sent for the doctor and you didn't have to pay. I think he's talking about sharecropping, his own growing up, the 40s, 50s. So should I say, Jack, you've got it wrong again. Should I tell him about the lynchings, the indignities of those years? Could it be he is unaware of all the suffering? Or does he have his own reasons for not disclosing what I have only read about? 
Does he have his own reasons for displaying a view of the past that shocks me? And should I decide what's real? No, I should just stick to my business on stage. I will back you up, Jack. I will swear your testimony tonight is the truth. I will swear that you are telling it right. Play the blues, Jack. So uh, this is um, what we were talking, what, what Cheryl mentioned before, the poem called Forgiving Our Fathers. It was adapted for the movie. This is the original version. And this is one of the first pieces that I, um, uh, the first pieces that I uh, adapted for uh, uh, the blues band and, and the poem. Um, so this is the original poem, slightly different from the movie. Okay, so Dan is being, uh, Dan has got the hardest job now because he's got he's to control the, the volume up and down. Um, so we're starting off with the vocal, Dan, and ready to go. Forgiving our fathers. Maybe in a dream. He's in your power. You twist his arm but you're not sure it was he that stole your money. You feel calmer and you decide to let him go free. Or he's the one as in a dream of mine that I must pull from the water, but I never knew it or wouldn't have done it until I saw the street theater play so close up, I was moved to actions I had never before taken. us too often or forever when we were little, maybe for scaring us with unexpected rage or making us nervous because there seemed never to be any rage there at all. For marrying or not marrying our mothers, for divorcing or not divorcing our mothers, and shall we forgive them for their excesses of warmth or coldness? Shall we forgive them for pushing or leaning, for shutting doors? Shall we forgive them for speaking only through layers of cloth or never speaking or never being silent? our age, or in theirs, or in their deaths, saying it to them, or not saying it? If we forgive our fathers, what is left?
So um, now moving on to the, to the poems that are from the current book, If the Delta Was the Sea, about Clarksdale, Mississippi. <coughs> this first poem is called, um, uh, if, we, if we have the right order on the CD, we're, uh, it's, this one is called Geography Lesson on First Trip to the Mississippi Delta. This poem displays uh, first my total ignorance about even where the Delta is uh, when I first went there, and, and secondly displays how uh, immediately welcome I felt. Um, so uh, here's the poem. It's got a uh, it's got a an epigraph from uh, a book uh, by a guy named David Cohn. Uh, it says the Mississippi Delta begins in the lobby of the Peabody Hotel in Memphis and ends on Catfish Row in Vicksburg. So, starting OK, Dan, with the vocal. <coughs> I had always pictured the Mississippi Delta just at the river's mouth. Never too clear on geography, that's all I remembered about deltas from sixth grade. But, but on my first trip, the plane lands far north of the Gulf in Memphis. This delta turns out to be a northwest Mississippi floodplain across from Arkansas, almost in Tennessee. But I am still vague on precise geography, so luckily the map the map in my rented car says, once out of South Memphis, just go straight down Route 61. Straight down Route 61. Straight down Route 61. Whoa, Dan. Straight down Route 61. I guess I should have figured it all out before. Blues boy King chose Memphis over New Orleans and what Elvis Presley inhaled along Beale Street was Delta fragrance, which is to say more ribs than magnolia, more guitar than piano, or is that just in my own mind? First impressions do leave the deepest marks, and in Clarksdale Mine is the Delta Blues Museum Workshop, where Dr. Mike James is teaching blues to 12-year-old musicians. Seeing my sax case, Mike just waves me to come and join them. At this point, I have found the Delta, and what's more, I know exactly where I am. At this point, I have found the Delta, and what's more, I know exactly where I am. At this point, I have found the Delta. And what's more, I know exactly where I am. Thank you. OK. Uh, you know uh, that when you go down to City Hall to get your poetic license, you also get authorization to create your own poetic version of a creation myth. Uh, this poem, this next poem is my version. It's a creation myth about the Yazoo Mississippi Delta in which the creator is called Mother Blues. The song is called, the, the poem is called Genesis, Introduction to a Song, written by Vasty Jackson and performed by Coco Taylor. As this would suggest, the poem leads up to and ends with the title of a song recorded by Coco Taylor, the Queen of the Blues, but you don't learn the title of the song till the very end of the poem. So, uh, and uh, this one starts with uh, the sax, and it's called Genesis, Introduction to a Song Written by Vasty Jackson and Performed by Coco Taylor. Thank you. 
Teatro. On the first day, Mother Blues rolled back the big waters to reveal the delta. On the second, she planted cottonwood, ash, hickory, tupelo, walnut, cypress. On the third day, red panther, bear, squirrel, mosquitoes. On the fourth, she sighed and sang. Out came mound builders, Choctaw, Chickasaw, humans, she thought, could complicate my life and some of them did. DeSoto, the French and British, the state of Mississippi. On the fifth day, someone brought in the slaves. Mother Blues feared she was losing control. <laughs> The sixth day when the Choctaw left their homes forever, she sang the treaty of dancing Rabbit Creek blues, quickly followed by her bound and whipped in the cotton field blues. Mother Blues was tired and knew she would need that seventh day to rest, but first she sought out the cruelest cotton planter, cleared a space at the edge of his land and built a cabin, invited the weariest field hands and the ones who had been secretly learning her craft. And it was Saturday night, and she said, now let the juke joint jump. Thank you. So Cheryl, I think we got time for about one more, right? Okay. This is the, uh, the title poem of the book, the new book, If the Delta Was the Sea, um, inspired by uh, a, a line from an old blues song, which you'll see in the poem. And this actually, this sort of came backwards. You know, usually you, there's a poem somewhere in the book that's got a line or a title that that'll be a good book title, and it just, it just wasn't coming, you know. Um, and finally, I thought of this title. How about, the, you know, If the Delta Was the Sea? And my friend and uh, co-editor uh, on Hanging Loose, Mark Pavlik, said, well, that's good, a good title, but now you have to write a poem to go with the title. So, so I had to do that kind of backwards. <coughs> but um, the poem is called If the Delta Was the Sea, and... Uh, there's an epigraph at the beginning from a wonderful novel by George Eliot called Adam Bede, which if you haven't read it, I recommend it. And her epigraph is, yes, thank God, human feeling is like the mighty rivers that bless the earth. It does not wait for beauty. It flows with resistless force and brings beauty with it. So this is if the delta was the sea. Go. (laughs) 
If the river was whiskey, Big T sings, one night at Red's juke joint, and I was a diving duck. This is a good old favorite from both black and white country traditions. If the river was whiskey and I was a diving duck, I would dive to the bottom and never come up. I am standing next to Big T playing the sax and blues being my meditative state. I think to myself, extraordinary metaphor to be conditional and transformative at the same time. And as usual, as usual, when I'm at Red's, I also feel immersed in Clarksdale. So my mind shifts and spins the image till it comes to rest on the mysteries around me. If the river was Clarksdale, what would I be? Stranger from such a different place, poking around, outsider trying to peer inside. Would I be Mark Twain on the Mississippi? Godlike pilot, sure hand, every rock and shoal clear in his mind, or would I be Rambo's drunken boat, floating unguided toward those phantasmic ocean visions, and knowing that each choice bears its own gifts and dangers? Should I dive or sink or drift? And and if the river was Clarksdale, the delta would be the sea, as indeed it once was vast and in many stories primal darkness upon the face of the deep while the earth is still without form. And if the delta was the sea, then Clarksdale, every town, roads, houses, forests, fields, even reds, all would be mingled with it as waters of the Mississippi flow to the Gulf. And we... And if the Delta, if the Delta was the sea, then Clarksdale, every town, roads, houses, forests, fields, even reds, all would be mingled with it as waters of the Mississippi flow to the Gulf. And we, looking out over this Delta Sea from our narrow lives, we would think it endless and always changeable. In the era when cotton is king, it's a gleaming sea, white in the sun. Or sometimes we look beneath layers, waves of black and brown topsoil, rich, deepest in the world, we're told, calm and smooth. Or on some days, the surface rough with old Indian mounds or anonymous clumps of earth where slaves are buried. And other days, maybe close to twilight, the Delta Sea is golden, trick of the light or a reflection of great wealth. And in the depths beyond our vision, the registry of bones, the dead, those newly wept for and down ever deeper, thousands of years back to the Bronze Age, 
famously democratic, this undersea city of bones, unhinged from age, race, history, cause of death, and by now the sea change into something rich and strange has, as promised, transfigured them all to coral and pearl. transfigured them all to coral and pearl. And as my meditations come to rest, back where I started at Red's, listening to Big T, if the river was Clarksdale and the delta was the sea, then tonight it would all be intense blue, deep blue delta sea, eternal, the purest, though darkest blue of blues, I might never come up. Thank you. and pear apricot and pear 